This is Joseph Drust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, any good tips for splitting a model across multiple files to increase performance? So to start off, I just have ZBrush loaded up and I have an example file here loaded in. So this mesh here consists roughly of 80 million polygons and it's spread across 72 subtools. So let's say you have a model like this and you're starting to reach this high polygon count. And your machine may not be the greatest, so when you start rotating on a model, it may start becoming sluggish. Now ZBrush loves computer cores and also RAM, so instead of going out and buying a new computer or maybe upgrading your RAM, is there any tricks or workflows I can do to maybe break this model up into different parts that will allow me to work on smaller separate files but still see the entire model all together? So here is a quick process you can do where you can take a model and get it down to a lower decimated version of it and then use that decimated version as a proxy and then you can copy and paste the high resolution versions onto that new tool which will allow you to work say on the arm in one file and the leg in another file and then not have the scenes be so heavy. So the first thing we need to do is just take our mesh and we need to generate a lower resolution version of it. So one process to do this that works really great is the usage of Decimation Master. So I'm going to go up to the Z plugin tab at the top here and open this up. And then I'm going to locate Decimation Master here and just open that up. And in here you have some processes that was going to allow you to take your model and decimate it down to a lower resolution version but still hold the details. Now usually this process is done in a single subtool format. So you'd click pre-process on the current subtool you have. Then you type in what percentage of polygons you want that subtool to be, and then you click Decimate Current. Now, instead of just processing a single subtool, Decimation Master also has the ability to pre process all and also decimate all. So, this will allow you to take all of these 72 subtools and process them all at once. So, to do this, just go to the Z plugin tab again, click this pre process all button, and this will run through all those subtools. Now, depending on how many polygons your mesh has and how many subtools it has, it could take a little while to do this. Now, after the mesh has pre processed all of these, we can just come down here and set a decimation value. So, for this 80 million polygon model here, I'm probably say I'd want to decimate down to about 10%. Now, if you're typing values into these sliders here, make sure you hit enter to lock in that value. And then, after you have it all pre processed, you have it set to the decimation percentage here, then you can just click decimate all. And this will once again go through all of the subtools and decimate them down to 10%. So I'm not going to live demo that process because on an 80 million polygon model, it does take a little bit of time. But here is the result of the decimated version here. Now I've also gone through and removed some of the threading or stitching on the original mesh because that is not really enhancing or showing the details. So I didn't need it in the decimated version. But here we have the decimated version of the model. And if I just toggle back between the high resolution and the decimated one, you can see that the decimation master does a really good job at taking that 80 million polygon model and converting it down to a 1.6 million polygon model. So really, really awesome stuff there. So now that I have this low resolution version of this mesh, this can now serve as my proxy. So this I can use to establish all these different parts, and then I can start merging in the high-res parts onto this file to create multiple ZTLs that don't contain the entire model, but only parts of the model. So as an example of this, let's just take the decimated one here, and I'm just going to first copy this, because say I want to make one file for the arm and then one file for the legs. So I'm just going to make sure I have that tool selected. I'm going to come to the tool palette up here, and I'm going to click Copy Tool. And when you click Copy Tool, it's going to copy the current tool you have selected. So that is everything that this tool contains. So all 59 of the subtools here in this tool. Now after this is copied, I can now just paste this. So I can click Paste, and this is going to create a duplicate of that entire tool. So now I have two of these tools here. So for one of these, I'm going to make it be just the arms. So I want the high-resolution versions of the arms. And for the other one, I just want it to be the high-resolution version of the legs. So I'm going to start with the arm one here, and I'm just going to come through and just remove the parts that I don't need anymore. So I'm just going to hold Alt, select those parts. And so this left shoulder guard here, and then I'm just going to click Delete. And I'm just going to hit Always OK to this, because I'm going to delete a few of these guys. I'm going to select the arm part here, delete this part here. And depending on how your file organized, um, this could go extremely fast. 
So if you have them all together, you can just even use the down arrow to select these guys. But I'm just going to use the Alt and Click method to click these. So now I've cleared out that arm, and I'm going to do the same on the other thing here. So just coming through, holding Alt, selecting that subtool, and then clicking Delete. And this is on the version of the model here that has all been decimated down, so the 1.6 million version there. So now I have this version of one of these. So all the stuff you see here is the decimated version of the model, and it's now missing the arms. So now I can start copying and pasting the high resolution versions of those models into this file. So I'm gonna go back to the high resolution version here. So this is the 80 million polygon one. I'm going to select part of the arm here. So holding down alt and clicking, and this is now going to select that subtool there. I can now go to the subtool palette here and come down to this area that has a copy. And now I can click copy. And this is now going to copy that subtool. So now that I have that subtool copied, I can now go back to the version without the arm there, the decimated one, and now I can paste. So now I have copied that high resolution version of that shoulder pad and I've pasted it into this file. So now I can repeat this process with the rest of the arm. So holding Alt and clicking to select the subtool, copying that subtool, going back to the proxy file here, doing that paste, going back to the arm for the high res, grabbing another subtool, going to copy, going back to the proxy and doing paste. And as you can see with this method here, I can come through and quickly copy all these different high res parts and paste them into the proxy file. And so this is going to allow me to just transfer all those details from one file to the next. So very handy process here. And you can get all that little stitching stuff. And then I get say the shoulder pads as well, paste them in and just get all those different parts. I'm just gonna jump ahead here. So here I have that entire arm now copied into this file. Now you'll notice that with this model here, I'm only at 8 million polygons. So just the arm itself and then the decimated version of the model, I now have a lighter weight file. So now with this scene, I can now save this out. So I can save this out as just the arm file here. Now I can do the same thing with the legs. So I can go over to this file here, and now I'm just going to start removing the leg parts. So clicking Alt to select those and doing those delete functions. So just coming through and deleting these different subtools out of this proxy one. Like so. So just clearing all those out really quickly. And if you had these things grouped or set up in subtools where you had all these together, this process does go faster. So it just depends how much organization you do on your models off the start. And we'll come through and select these guys too. And then maybe these straps. So just coming through and selecting those with Alt and clicking Delete. So now we have a version of the file here with those legs removed. So now I can do that same process when I go back to the high res, select that high res part, copy it, go back to the low res and paste it in. Now I'm gonna jump ahead on this one too and just go through all that process quick. So here we have a version of the legs now, so the leg file here. And this is now down to 20 million polygons. So you can see all the parts that are decimated are still those decimated versions. And then I have all the leg files, which are those high resolution versions from the original. So now that I have a file that has the legs in it and then a version of the file with the arms. So now the file with the arms is at 15 million and the legs is at 20 million. So now instead of having one 80 million polygon file, I now have split it up into two files. So allow me to work on the arms and then the legs. And this is gonna be a little lighter weight here to increase that performance on your machine. Now the main goal is to just go through and generate a proxy version of your model and then start appending in those high resolution versions to it. So there are many ways to do this, but using this copy and paste function here under the subtool palette works pretty well. And you can just go through and quickly just copy and paste different elements and drag them into your scene. After you have those generated, you can just save these out. So I can save this out as the arm file and then save this out as the leg file. And then you probably also want to just save your master version too, or the one with all the high-res parts. Then after you're done with your sculpting on your leg file here, you can just do that same process and just copy the finished version of the model and then paste it back into the high-resolution one if needed. You can also redecimate these parts and then transfer them back and forth as well. 
So that'll allow you to use these proxy meshes along with high resolution parts on different scenes. So if you have any other questions related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing.